Okay, we're back. <clears throat> we're going to start taking things apart here to get ready for the installation of this board. We're following our instructions. Hopefully the light is a little bit better. We're actually in my garage. I don't really have a proper electronics workbench, at least not yet. And um, went to the car and I got my smaller pair of cutters. And we're going to continue on here. So it says at the top of the supply there are four diodes mounted to the terminal strip. Two on the strip, two going to the capacitors. Clip out all four diodes, leave the resistors, leave the capacitors in place. These parts comprise the 600 volt plate supply. These parts are not used. Leave them in for as for looks. Okay. So, we've got these diodes. By the way, I double checked all these capacitors to make sure that they were completely discharged. And they were. This power supply, <coughs> excuse me, this power supply has not been plugged in for several years, so I wouldn't expect them to be charged over that period of time. But since we're talking about high voltages here, better safe than dead. So we take whatever precautions we need to take when we're dealing with high voltage circuitry like this. Okay, so I cut those four resistors out. It was actually five. That's kind of interesting, but whatever. Unsolder the one red wire from the leftmost capacitor lug. Uh. Here we're in my challenges. What's red and what's not. Unsolder the one red wire from the leftmost capacitor lug. Remove this lead over move this lead over to the second lug from the right on the terminal strip. Well, the way that I'm looking at this from this angle, and the instructions specifically talk about this uh, power supply oriented in this fashion with the power cable and the wall cable to the left, is that <clears throat> this is metallic. So that's what it's insulated. Again, can't, it can't be too safe. That looks like the leftmost lug. And so, not sure what color that wire is. Usually when I'm not sure, that means it's one of the suspect colors. But I'm going to start with this wire and I'm going to see where that goes. But before I do that, I'm going to take a picture. Because if I need a lifeline back, picture is worth a thousand okay a thousand words there's my little needle nose pliers here
that end lead looks like it's in okay shape so we're not going to cut a fresh end end on move this lead over to the second lug from the right that would be this lug here I'm going to have to remove some solder little hook here. Move the lead over the second leg from the right. Do not solder the wire at this time. Well, that's good because I didn't intend to. Check your work. You should have two red wires on the terminal strip. One in the center, one on the second terminal. Indeed, the center and the right. <clears throat> okay. So, next, cut the white orange wire from the capacitor lead. Capacitor on the left with a 150k ohm resistor attached. This wire will be connected to the PCB later. Cut the white orange wire from the capacitor lead, capacitor on the left, with a 150k resistor attached. I think that that is what they're referring to. Let's double check. Double and triple checking is a good thing.
Well, that's not measuring. It's 150k. Here's that. I think they're talking about this wire. I'm not sure. Is it white orange? That's not white orange, it's white maybe brown or red. wire from the capacitor lead okay so this wire different coloring which we were warned of but the image looks like it's this wire that he's referring to It does look like it's just the wire is dirty. It does look like it's a band. Okay. This wire will be connected to the PCB later. Right now it goes to a single lug terminal strip just above the bias control. Mm -hmm. It goes to a single long terminal strip. Okay, I've marked the wire. <coughs> in the following in the following steps, it is best to cut the resistor leads and then heat the joint and remove the old lead. The lugs on the bias terminal are fragile. If you break one off, you are in deep do. Not deep doo doo, but deep doo. Remove the two resistors connected to the bias control. I believe that this is the bias control. Those are two resistors. Remove two resistors connected to the bottom bias control. Remove the ground lead from the bias control. So, resistor, resistor, ground lead. Remove the large blue wire from the capacitor's terminal. Ah, uh, okay. Large blue wire. Thank God the color is still the same. Remove the small green wire. Aha, that's green, eh? Remove the 
Remove the old capacitors, use brick parts, and the capacitor is then to be pulled out off. This is the original bias in the voltage circuits. Okay. We have a picture in the diagram, and I'm just checking. Well, again, you can't be too safe here, so let's take another picture. Remove the ground lead, remove the large blue wire from the capacitor's terminal, and the green wire. Let's see if I can get these wires off without cutting them. That one came off easy. That one came off easy too. Okay. Now, it says remove the old capacitors, use pliers, and twist the mounting tabs off. This capacitor actually, I'm not sure why they said to do that because it's screwed in. Some of the capacitors mount with two small metal tapping screws. Thank you for putting that on the next page. Remove the screws, keep some for use later, then remove the old capacitor.
Mm -hmm. That's too big. Save those suckers so we will. Well, he didn't say anything about a diode. one in this picture. This is well we'll cut this grounding wire and guess we'll have to cut this diode. Hopefully it's not going to be used later. Okay, so there's one of the dead capacitors. 40 microfarad, two 40 microfarads. One one fifty uh, volts and one one thirty. <clears throat> Remove all capacitors, it's the original. Some capacitor counts. Drake chose to solder some capacitors to the chassis. Don't waste your time trying to unsolder them. Remove the hardware and pry the capacitor loose on one end, then rock it back and forth to break the solder. Ooh, we don't have that problem. Oh, wait. Yeah, we do have that problem in one. Clip out the diode and ground wire from the capacitor you just removed from the two resistors. Now remove the capacitor. Ha, huh, so we got that right. So we did the right thing. <clears throat> Clip out the remaining two diodes on the terminal strip between the two capacitors. That. yellow wire and the white wire from the center capacitor. That is a white wire and that is a yellow wire. But we're going to go against instructions here and we are going to them off. Sand resistor. Sand resistor. On 
a large sand resistor. What the hell is a sand resistor? That's a first for me. I built a ton of kits. What is a sand resistor? So I think he's referring to this. And we have two screws holding that capacitor in. microfarad 150 volt okay two more screws clip out the other end of the large sand resistor and the 150k resistors clip out the small yellow wire and remaining end of the small white wire okay so they want this So we'll set that little white wire aside in case we need it. Clip out the small yellow wire, the remaining into the small white wire. Clip out the small Yeah, well you already said to clip out the small yellow wire, so Remove the last capacitor. Now this one does not appear to be screwed in. Here, Drake has definitely soldered this capacitor to the chassis. Mallory, two 100 microfarad, 350 volt. Okay. Uh, I could not find my solder gun. It has uh, walked off. 
and so I actually took a Dremel tool and cleaned that blob of solder off. All right, so. After removal of the old caps and diodes and resistors, check your work. You should now have all three bottom capacitors. <laughs> you should now have all three bottom capacitors removed. The center terminal strip should have one yellow wire connected. Uh, you should now have all three bottom capacitors removed. The center terminal strip should have one yellow wire connect and one blue wire connected. Yes, there's a blue wire there. A small gray wire is also connected to the ground terminal on the strip. There will be one unattached large blue wire, one unattached large yellow wire, and an unattached small green wire. Yes, yes, and yes. Actually, there are two unattached yellow wires. <clears throat> should be no wires connected to the bias control. That is correct. Oh, the center terminal strip should have one yellow wire and one blue wire connected and a small gray wire in between. Yeah. There will be one unattached large blue wire and one unattached large yellow wire and an unattached small green wire. Yes, yes, and Yes, but there's also a small yellow wire here that you haven't mentioned. Okay, well, we'll see where that comes into play. So yes, yes, and yes, and question mark. And let's get the... I'm sure we're going to be attaching something to the bias control, so let's get these cleaned up. Okay, so those are ready for more wires. In this step, you will move the unattached large yellow wire to the empty lug on the solder strip that holds the two large red wires. So this <coughs> apparently is going over here. <clears throat> Hmm. 
And this. In this step, you'll move the large unattached the you'll move the unattached large yellow wire to the empty lug on the solder strip that holds the two large red wires. Do not cut this yellow wire. Take the unattached large yellow wire and place it on the second solder leg from the left. This terminal strip should now have in this order from left to right capacitor to ground lug. large yellow large red large red unused ground bug Except in my case, this capacitor is attached to this fuse link. Damn allergies. Let's put a little hook in this thing first. I'll do for now. <clears throat> Capacitor. Locate the PCB assembly you had laid aside before. <clears throat> Solder two blue wires and two yellow wires to the pads on the bottom of the PCB. Make sure you trim off any excess wire leads from the PCB. Hint. Fold the yellow and blue wires into a single loop. Solder both ends into the pads on the PCB. Fish the two loops down into the old capacitor hole on the chassis. <clears throat> Solder two blue wires. <clears throat> okay, we're back. I figured it out. I thought this was a wiring harness. It's not. It's just a convenient way to give you multiple wires. 
and I started soldering already I forgot to turn the camera back on so here we are so it says to water two wire two blue wires and two yellow wires to the PCB <coughs> I've already got the blue wires in as you can see and now I'm doing the yellow wires And that's one yellow wire. <clears throat> and one more. Oh, there's a little solder defect. You can't see it, but I can. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I've got the wires done. It's slightly different than what they said uh, because I cut the two. I cut these two in half just by making a loop out of it. They, the kit builder says, or the kit maker says, to just leave leave them in the loop uh, to pass through. But I didn't do that. So now. <clears throat> comes the physical attachment of yeah the PCB to this chassis now I'm not going to film that uh, according to the instructions you're supposed to uh, use the transformer as a basis for mounting the PCB so I'm going to fiddle with that just in terms of the uh, uh, brevity of time so that I don't put you all looking at this video and completely to sleep I'm gonna do this mechanical stuff <clears throat> with these screws and standoffs and whatnot off camera and I will show you the result and if I had any struggles I'll let you know what they are so I'll be back bye Okay, <clears throat> I'm not going to leave you out completely. <clears throat> so this is how it looks. This is the transformer. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it says to tighten these standoffs and the nuts to secure the PCV. And I haven't done the tightening. It says don't over tighten, so we're not going to get too ambitious. I'm just going to tighten until I feel some resistance. nuts and again it says not to over tighten so we're just snugging these nuts we're not going hog wild here no need for a torque wrench no rocking no no play is good to me now <clears throat> Mm 
Not the PVC root, the four wires, two blue and two yellow, uh, through one of the old capacitor holes. Before mounting the extra terminal strip in the next step, you may want to cut off or bend over the ground lug so you don't solder wires to this lug. Mount the extra terminal strip provided in the kit to one of the old capacitor holes using one of the old capacitor mounting screws. Mount this terminal strip to the mounting hole in the bottom most center capacitor. Uh, <clears throat> I think again for, for brevity's sake with the video I'm going to see what I can do. Now here's the terminal strip that they're talking about and it goes under here. Whoa! The sucker is heavy. First of all let's push these wires through this capacitor hole. Okay, that's done. <clears throat> and they want us to use one of these screw holes to mount. And they're also saying, see that how there's a lug on the on the uh, part that secures to the chassis, that would be the ground lug. They're saying that we should bend this over. So I'm going to do all that. I'm going to do it off camera. I don't think that that's anything exciting that you guys need to see. And then we'll resume and see what's next. Okay. Okay, I'm back. So <clears throat> what I've done is I have mounted the new terminal strip here. And the instructions went on to say reattach the blue wire to the new strip and attach one of the blue wires, doesn't matter which one, the new blue wires coming from the printed circuit board to that point. Also the instructions said to attach one of the blue wires coming from the printed circuit board to the existing three lug uh, terminal, sorry for the background noise, uh, where the existing blue wire was, so I did that. Then the instructions said to route, uh, to uh, solder one of the new yellow wires to the three lugs where the old yellow wire is. And the second yellow wire from the printed circuit board snakes under and goes to this board up here, or, or this terminal lug rather, up here where the old existing yellow wire lug is. And so that's as far as I've gotten um, uh, in your absence. Uh, and so the rest of this is really about wiring, I think. And so I'm going to take this slowly. In fact, I'm going to take a break at this point. Uh, being hunched over this bench uh, is bothering my back. <clears throat> so I'm going to go do something else first. I'm at a convenient stopping point. And then we're going to pick this up and uh, hopefully finish it and then uh, do some testing. There is one caveat here, which is the bias adjustment. The instructions for the uh, kit basically say follow your uh, transmitter manual for how to set the uh, bias voltage. And of course, that is extremely important in these two base radios. Uh, I don't think that I have the manual for the transmitter, so that is going to be a bit of an impediment. Um, I'm sure that there are manuals online. I just need to get the right manual for the right generation of my particular transmitter. So we'll see how, how that all plays out. But more wiring to come at this point. And as I said, I'm going to take a break and I will catch up with you guys for you in a second. And for me, who knows when. See you. Bye. Okay, I'm back. So, uh, I had a problem with this um, uh, camcorder in that it stopped working for a while. And I had to think about how bad it was misbehaving overnight. And um, took the battery out and reseated it, and that solved the problem. So, not sure how the battery got uh, jarred loose to begin with, but it did, um, since it was on a stand. However, because I wanted to continue on with this build, I continued on with the wiring. 
and I finished everything and powered it on and had a spectacular smoke out as this capacitor went kablooey. Uh, if you can see it's slightly bowed at the end and I've removed it from the board and I've already ordered a couple of replacements because it's impossible to get just one um, and uh, so while we wait for that <clears throat> I went back over my work trying to figure out where I went wrong in terms of the wiring and as far as I can tell the problem is right there uh, the way that the uh, wording on this uh, the instructions for wiring I think that these yellow wires are supposed to be on this lug separated from the red wires as best I can tell um, but uh, the, as I said the, the wording is is not uh, it doesn't help me anyway it could be just me um, but uh, um, it's kind of not it, it's kind of neither here nor there because as I've said, this is an old generation of this particular kit, and uh, I'm going to assume that the newer generations of this kit have uh, better descriptives. I'm looking for the passage here uh, that got me into trouble. And where is it? Let me find it. Hang on. So this is the step I think that I've gotten confused. It says in this step you will move the unattached large yellow wire to the empty lug on the solder strip that holds the two large red wires. Do not cut this yellow wire. Take the unattached large yellow wire and place it on the second solder lug from the left, uh, which I interpreted to be that solder lug. One, two. Um, this terminal strip should now have in this order from left to right capacitor to ground lug large yellow large red large red unused ground lug I think that what they're saying is that these yellow wires should be here not here and that I've got these red wires, uh, this particular, the red wire coming from the uh, transformer and these yellow wires also coming from the transformer essentially shorted, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate those wires onto these lugs and then we will see what happens. I'm going to continue on and continue to review the other wiring that I've done. But so far, that's my primary suspect that this is actually representing some sort of short or I'm putting too much voltage into that particular section of the circuit and it overwhelmed those 350 volt or at least one of the three 350 volt capacitors. Um, so uh, I don't have anything to test capacitors to see if they're good unfortunately. Um, so since this is the only capacitor that was uh, smoking like crazy I'm going to uh, assume that the others are good. Uh, the minimum lot that I could find was two, so I may use both when they arrive. Um, uh, I may not, uh, just because soldering and desoldering and all of that is a pain. But uh, that's where we stand, so uh, we'll see where it goes. It'll be a couple days before the replacement parts show up, so uh, for you it'll be a second, for me it'll be a couple days while I wait for these parts to come in. If I find any other wiring defects, which would be down in this area, I will uh, come back and uh, turn the camcorder on and, and show you what I found. The other thing that I did have to do here is that I ran out of some of the color-coded wire. So for instance, this black wire um, is not supposed to be black. I believe it's supposed to be white. Uh, but I ran out of white wire and uh, so I used some spare black wire of uh, an equal um, uh, size 
comparable sized wire to the white wire. So we're actually maybe a little bit more robust, better that than too thin. And so uh, I had uh, um, two instances where I ran out of wire of the color that uh, was being described. I also ran out of yellow wire um, and uh, had to compensate accordingly. So there are actually two um, uh, black wire runs that are supposed to be a different color. This is one of them. And the other one is here. This was supposed to be yellow, I think. Um, and uh, or white I don't remember yellow I think and uh, so and that black wire here is correct that's ground wire uh, but uh, when you're in the throes of battle you got to go with what you got to go with I did not have any spare supplies of um, this thin gauge wire and so I had to use what was available in this kit um, so, and in fact, I did try, I did have a small amount of wire, but this wire, this yellow wire was too heavy. Um, I think this is probably 14, uh, and, uh, it wouldn't fit through the lug holes and I decided not to use it. Uh, so, uh, that's kind of the story. And, uh, like I said, if I find any more mistakes that I may have made, I certainly will turn the camera on and let you know, and I'm sorry that you missed the fireworks or the smoke works uh, when this capacitor went um, that would have been fun uh, for you guys to uh, laugh at my folly but uh, it is what it is so you will get a second chance though once I fix this wiring or I think fix this wiring and pull these two yellow wires off and put them here that um, hopefully this thing will fire up again the, the next round and, and work the way that it was supposed to so uh we'll see i'll see you guys in a couple days i guess and uh we'll go from there thanks okay just a quickie to uh show you that i have separated the red and the yellow wires um from the way that they were configured previously hopefully that solves the problem so when i get the replacement capacitor and put it back on the uh, printed circuit board that hopefully all will be well uh, so again uh, we will see you shortly when the part comes in bye okay <clears throat> General purpose gloves probably will not save my life in a high voltage situation, but hey, you never know. Every little bit helps. Safety glasses on. <clears throat> Standing behind you guys watching the camera, and I'm going to plug this in and see if it blows. Well, I hear the transformer humming very quietly. You might hear it, I doubt it, but it's possible. No smoke this time, at least not yet. I'm still standing back here with the at the ready to pull the plug. Well, so far so good, I guess. Now we're supposed to do a couple of voltage measurements. And uh, let's see what the instructions say about that. High voltage, 650 volt test. <clears throat> so, Here's where another disclaimer comes in. This is for a tube transmitter. Tubes require high voltage to run, by and large. So, there are lethal voltages circulating in that circuit right now, and we need to be extremely careful because while you guys 
might enjoy watching me electrocute myself, I can assure you that I would not enjoy that at all. Uh, so we're going to be careful. It says the iron, the orange wire should read at least 650 to 750 volts. Well, actually, I should take a step back. The instructions say, plug in the supply. If you hear crackling, snapping, or smell, or see smoke, remove the power cord from the supply at once. Of course, I saw that before, and I'm very sorry that I did not record that spectacular moment for you. But uh, the camcorder was being cantankerous and uh, would not turn on. Uh, and so the orange wire should read at least 650 volts. What orange wire is he referring to? The yellow wire should be 290 volts. The green wire is the bias and its value will vary based on as you adjust the bias trimmer. Remember bias voltage is minus when reference to ground. These voltages are from an unloaded supply and may vary as much as 20%. Um, shit. Oh, I said a bad word. The orange wire should read at least 650 to 750 volts. So we've got this on DC volts. This is a thousand volt ohm meter. Move this over here. Hopefully you can see it. Can you see it? Let me check. It's just outside camera range. There we go. Let's pull this back a little bit on my cluttered bench. You know what? That's a good point. <clears throat> Let's do a little bit of decluttering since we're dealing with high voltages here. And I have an aversion to death in these COVID-19 times. <clears throat> so let's not have any risk, risk factors going on here, shall we? So it's a nice quiet hum. The last time when I turned this thing on, it was a noisy hum, an angry hum didn't sound right and then those those cans or at least that one can C3 started to smoke so black to ground I think this is the orange wire Three hundred three volts. No, oh, it's not six hundred fifty volts. The yellow wire. Be at least two hundred ninety volts says 151 but which yellow wire is he referring to or are all the yellow wires the same be careful we don't want to short here where did the plug go here it is so Nice quiet hum. Volt ohm meter on. Never throw caution to the wind when you're dealing with high voltages like this. So I've got one hand behind my back and I've got 303 volts. Let me do that again for you guys. Now, of course, I don't have my other hand behind my back at the moment, but there we are, 304 volts. So the circuit is now operating correctly. And where was the 800 volts? Okay.
745 volts. As long as it's below 800, I'm good. And so this exercise is now complete. Our our uh, power supply is working with the retrofitted capacitor bank. These capacitors up here are now dead. They're left in just for aesthetic purposes. I can now put the cover on. So there you have it. Trials and tribulations, uh, uh, fateful errors, all included. <coughs> this was my effort to uh, um, retrofit the um, the Drake AC4 power supply with this kit from was it Sunrise? Whatever the the name of the the name of the manufacturer, of the kit will be um, on the. Um, in the description uh, on the video. So, hope you got something out of it, or at least uh, had uh, a chuckle out of my uh, foibles here, but uh, there it is. It's working, and as soon as I get the covers on and get this connector epoxied up, we'll take it to the next step, which is adjust the bias voltage on the transmitter itself. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.